Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now back in March of 2017, AMD launched their first Ryzen processors, the 1700X, 1700 and 1800X. The 1800X was the most expensive at $499 and often praised in reviews for its excellent performance in CPU heavy tasks and workloads. That said, when it came to gaming, some found that spending the extra was hard to justify compared to the $329 Ryzen 7 1700. Eight years later, and the Ryzen 7 1800X here can be found for around 10% of its original price. I've seen plenty on ebay.com for just $50. Here in the UK you can get them for under £40. I paid £38 for this one. 8 cores and 16 threads for this sort of money sounds tempting but in my research for this video I was told that these old Zen cores will be bested by modern Intel Core i3s. Back in the day, top tier first gen Ryzen's were often compared to and fell short of the quad core i7 7700K, which itself has been beaten by a 12th gen i3 right here on this channel. So it all adds up. But let's take a look at the 1800X in action in 2025 to see what it's capable of. I've paired it with a 16 gig Radeon RX 9060 XT, and for some context, I'll throw in some comparative figures to the i3 12300 to see if new or new ish i3s really are better in games and by how much. I'll add these comparative results later on in the video. I've paired the processors today with 32 gigs of 3200 MHz dual channel DDR4 and began the testing with stock speeds. The 1800X will hit a maximum of 3.7 GHz when all 8 cores are utilised as you can see here. So we'll start with Counter-Strike 2 at 1080p with a high preset and 4x MSAA where we saw 136 FPS for the 1800X, a 1% low of 72 and a 0.1% low of 54. This was a bit of a weird result because it really did differ depending on which map and game mode that we played. Aside from that, in some cases performance could be all over the place. The percentile lows I feel could have been better. GTA 5 Enhanced next with the high ray tracing preset and TAA for 81 frames per second, a 1% low of 62 and a 0.1% low of 54. This was pretty consistent given the age of the chip. And what you're going to notice throughout is that the CPU is definitely going to be the limiting factor. And that's what we want in a CPU test really, especially when we throw up the comparisons later on. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 with high preset and SMAA2 TX saw 79 FPS on average with a 1% low of 61 and a 0.1% low of 51. This was a little more GPU intensive and in some areas the 9060 XT actually hit 95 to 100 percent utilization which was surprising to see especially with the Ryzen at stock speeds. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle was very similar more GPU intensive here as you can see by the on-screen overlay and this meant that we saw 87 FPS with some pretty consistent Consistent percentile number 75 and 68 here. Cyberpunk 2077 is one of the more CPU intensive titles that I tested today and as such with the high preset which kept the crowds at medium we saw 55 FPS but this wasn't completely problem free we saw a 1% low of 36 and a 0.1% low of 32. When you get into those busier and more densely packed areas, you're going to see the frame rate drop quite a bit. But it's not as bad as it would be if we had the high crowds enabled, which is a pretty CPU intensive option. Oblivion Remastered then with high preset and TAA to finalise with 56 FPS overall, a 1% low of 21 and a 0.1% low of 9. Yeah, this definitely had a few problems to say the least on the 1800X. It started off really bad and then it picked up a bit after about five minutes of playing so yeah it's not all bad but still not the smoothest of experiences of course the ryzen 1800x can be overclocked though performance improvements may be more marginal these days i got this one to four gigahertz no problem on a basic b450 motherboard though heat and power draw will be increased of course i'm using a cheap thermal right assassin king 120 se and it did a fine job of keeping this chip cool every game showed an improvement in one way or another whether it was an increase in average frame rate or percentile lows sometimes both i definitely recommend overclocking a first gen ryzen in 2020 25, even if this won't completely transform the performance or save it from the stutters and slowdown that will inevitably be experienced. Let's run through some overclocked gameplay tests now and I'll have the stock figures on screen too. So Counter-Strike 2, this time we saw 156 FPS, a 1% low of 87 and a 0.1% low of 66. In GTA 5 with the high RT preset, of course, we saw 90 FPS, a 1% low of 70 and a 0.1% low of 65. 
Kingdom Come Deliverance 2, of course, a more GPU-intensive game. Saw 83 FPS here with a 1% low of 60 and a 0.1% low of 49. Not much of a difference, really, compared to the stock Ryzen, as expected in this one. And the same can be said for Indiana Jones and the Great Circle here. 87 FPS with a 1% low of 76 and a 0.1% low of 71. Cyberpunk 2077, 59 FPS here with the overclocked 1800X, a 1% low of 39 and a 0.1% low of 36. So a slight improvement to the average, but not worlds away in terms of those percentile numbers. Oblivion Remastered did show some improvements, though not in terms of the average, which was exactly the same, 55.5 or rounded up to 56 FPS here. The 1 and 0.1% lows were improved up from 21 and 9 to 24 and 13 respectively, though it's not much of a noticeable difference when you're actually playing. This time, let's put the results from the 1800X at stock speeds on screen, as well as the 4 GHz overclocked results and the i3-12300 results. Core i3s from 12th gen onwards are still surprisingly capable as part of modern gaming systems, as I think these results will show. I was actually quite surprised. I'm using the same 3200 MHz DDR4 across all of these tests. So the i3 bested the Ryzen 7 1800X with both stock and overclock speeds here by over 100 frames per second. Of course, I don't have an, a motherboard that is capable of overclocking the i3-12300. I'm not sure if that's even possible, but I don't really think we need to do that in my opinion. And if you're buying a chip like this, you probably don't have overclocking in mind. Anyway, for GTA 5 Enhanced with the i3, we saw an average of 122. This was up from 90 with the overclocked Ryzen and uh, 81 with the stock Ryzen 1800X. We also saw some improvements to the percentile lows up to 78 for that 1% figure and 63 compared to 70 and 65 for the 1800X. So not worlds away, there were still a few dips and drops probably because of the four cores uh, for this one. But if we just take this in terms of the average, then yeah, the i3 offered a far superior experience. Now, as I said before, Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is one of the more GPU intensive titles. So I didn't think that we'd see much of a difference in terms of the average here, but I was wrong. Uh, 112 FPS with the i3 up from 83 on the overclocked 1800X and 79 on the stock 1800X. The percentile lows were also improved, although we did experience a few issues with that 0.1% figure. Again, the occasional dip and drop, likely because of the four cores here. As good as these cores are as part of the i3, there isn't that many of them, which will lead to some problems. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, again, is another GPU intensive example and I thought oh for sure this one will definitely be very similar and it wasn't worlds away in terms of that average it was 97 with the i3 compared to 87 with the overclocked 1800x and the same 87 fps result with the stock 1800x2 if we look at the percentile lows here they're 81 and 54 and this was actually slightly worse in terms of that 0.1% figure anyway when compared to the Ryzen um, both overclocked and at stock. So I think this one appreciates the extra cores, even if the result isn't as good in terms of the average number. For Cyberpunk 2077 with the i3, we saw 88 FPS with a 1% low of 54 and a 0.1% low of 43. This was an improvement overall compared to the 1800X. There were still a few dips and drops to be expected, with this one, it will suffer in particularly CPU intensive situations, but for the most part, it held up pretty well here. And to finalize then, we have Oblivion Remastered once again with 81 FPS on the i3. And this was certainly a better experience than it was with the 1800X, both at stock and overclocked speeds. The average was better, but let's say hypothetically it wasn't, it would still be a, a smoother result because of the improvements to the percentile numbers here. So a lot more consistent regardless of the average, which was quite a bit better. Anyway, 81 compared to 56 for the overclocked 1800X and, well, 56 for the stock 1800X. But there we have it. The Ryzen 1800X doesn't make much sense in 2025. The good thing is that if you do have one, then you've got an AM4 motherboard, which will make upgrading to a newer Ryzen hassle-free. 
you might just need a BIOS update. Even the Ryzen 5 3600, for example, would offer superior gaming performance, and that would make a nice upgrade path. Although I used an i3 as an example in comparisons today, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. It was just for context. The i5 12400F doesn't cost much more and offers more cores and threads for extra peace of mind. But let me know what you think. I'm still pretty happy with how the 1800X is holding on in 2025, and it's certainly a fun one to mess around with when it comes to overclocking. As for this video, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you want to and you haven't done so, of course, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.